So what's going on guys, it's your boy Nishro here, and Ogdoatic is starting to make a name for itself again. For maybe like the past few months, like I think Ogdoatic has been a deck that has had potential, but I just think not a lot of people either know about the deck or have playtested with it or playtested against it. Even now, we're seeing a 50 card build get top 8 at the Providence Regional this past weekend. It was about 300 duelists, so top 8 out of 300 is, is pretty is pretty good, pretty damn convincing, right? So we start to look into the list, right? So we see Triple Fenrir, Triple Leos, one of the Mega Corella, and uh, when I made my guide for Ogdoatic last year, I didn't really cover this particular card much. I just mentioned, like, yeah, there's multiple um, Eva tiles that you can use. And this one was like a pretty big one because it's a level one fire that gives you access to Leos. Something that I just underestimated with Leos is its ability to actually combo into Noya, which I didn't really realize when I made my video last year. But so with Leos, you can mill basically any fire dinosaur or reptile from your deck for free, basically. So you can mill miscellaneous source. And then from milling miscellaneous source, you can summon Archosaur from deck. Archosaur could then pop Leos and then search Noya. And Noya is the best uh, starter that you can have for Ogdoatic. It's in some ways even better than Nunu. And that's because Noya can discard itself, mill curse, and then curse can summon back the Noya, searching you either Daybreak or Water Lily or whatever. And then if you can resolve Daybreak, you're getting like four tokens for free. It actually works a lot better than I thought it did initially. So I'm really happy to see that this deck has some really crazy lines. And that's on top of the fact that Leos sets Evil Singularity from your deck on summon. And Evil Singularity during your opponent's turn will basically summon you a Lars with two negates instead of just one because both of its materials are going to be dinosaur and reptile. Block Bomba as an extender, we have Mr. Invasive Alien Species. It could punish your opponent basically if they use a, de a deck with a field spell. So like Divine Temple, Fire King Island, Voiceless doesn't have a field spell, maybe like Flanderese and it can just pop monsters they control. And then he gains like a thousand attack. And he also can't be destroyed by battle by card effects while your opponent has a face-up field spell so it's a really interesting card when you mix it with something like snake rain or the nephil abyss or even like daybreak and what's interesting is that you're not seeing this player use the night sword serpent like they're not using a lot of like crazy extenders that are just extenders they're using a lot of cards that like have multi-purpose like ogdo abyss you could summon it off of water lily or off of uh the nephil abyss while this is on field it's a board wipe for anything not summoned from graveyard nephil abyss revives any monster from your graveyard uh once per turn but if you summon it with its own effect, then you're locked into reptiles. But if you summon it off of Water Lily, it can revive any monster from Graveyard, which is really crazy. What's really interesting to me is like playing the Amunesia and the Aaron. I don't really see a lot of lists play these two guys. And they're really just good control cards for the opponent because Aaron, when your opponent adds a card from deck to hand, it kind of like Dark Laws them. They have to discard one randomly. And then Amunesia, if they summon a card from the Graveyard, you get to send a monster, you get to send any card they control to the graveyard, and then if a card is sent from their hand or deck to the graveyard, you could summon a light or dark reptile from your graveyard. So the, these two cards, like especially together, could really uh, damage your opponent's strategy. It's just, they're kind of difficult to summon out, but if you're using Water Lily, Serpent Strike, Nephil Abyss, these guys get, become a lot easier to bring out and become a lot easier pressure on your opponent. The single curse, right? Curse is like the, the best way to get Noya out. Nunu is the best Ogdoatic starter because it, it, it can get you to two level fours with your Zoha. Nunu can discard itself, mill Zoha, Zoha can uh, add itself to hand, and then Nunu can special summon itself from graveyard. So basically you get two level fours, you overlay into King of the Feralimps, and then Feralimps gets you into Noya, and then Noya gets you into the Ogdoatic line. So we see triple snake rain, broken card, not much else to say about this card and snakes have like a lot of options as to what you can mill and like what utility you can get out of your graveyard so it's really cool that like you get to kind of like pick and choose what you think works best not only for the strategy that you're trying to commit but also for like the format because some reptiles are better than others like our invasive alien species here 
So Serpent Strike is basically a, a discard. You get to send a, a monster from hand or field to graveyard, then summon a reptile from your graveyard with a different attribute. So like you discard a light, you summon a dark, discard a dark, summon a light. That works really well with your Nephil Abyss, or you could even bring back the Ogdo Abyss. And Ogdo Abyss could, could be live, or Nephil Abyss could revive any other monster from graveyard. So you got Water Lily, which is part of the main combo line, where if you already have four reptile names, like if you go through the Noya line, You'll get to Mill of Reptile, and then if you have five or more, then you can summon one from Graveyard. Basically means, like, if you have enough Reptiles in your Graveyard, you just summon any Reptile from deck or Graveyard. That That's basically what this card says. When you mix it with a Snake Rain, <laughs> this card says, summon any Reptile monster from deck or Graveyard. And then Daybreak, you tribute a Reptile, you summon a token for every two levels that it has. At the bare minimum, with Curse and Noya, you can tribute Curse, get four level two tokens because it's level eight right so that's four or i mean i've never really seen people tribute the level tens to resolve daybreak but it's a possibility if you have no other play i guess and then daybreak can uh shuffle back one of your banished monsters and then mill a reptile as well in case you want to mill one of your king or queens or if you don't already have ogdo abyss engrave triple fossil dig because it give uh, digs for leos and i think leos is a better extender than or leos is a better normal summon than like anything else in the deck so that's why you can like commit really hard to the fossil digs because this is better than the lamia combos i was showing those were cool but this is like a lot better and it's also more searchable like there's also like evil diversity fossil dig can also dig you for misc so if you already have the leos you can just search misc and then miss you know discard misc and now leos is immune to like hand traps which is also cool triple prosperity i mean it's a 50 card deck makes sense econs are interesting especially in this format but you really like you make a lot of bodies that really don't do anything on field like it's really only your king and queen Fenrir that'll actually do something you have like a, a lot of bodies that you may not need anymore or you can spare for something like enemy controller so this is a good call same thing like droplet droplet's a good call thrust talents called by and then planet pollutant for the virus lock if you don't know what the virus lock is i i have a video showcasing it on my channel it's actually the recommended video when you click on my channel for the first time you could just click to see what the virus lock is so one lars double king of the fair limbs first one for starter second one for follow-up cowboy for time underworld goddess amble whale and i was really interested to see princess in this list i actually never considered princess i never looked back into ogdoatic post phantom nightmare so i i never really thought about princess so it's it's nice to see princess here uh zero here m frame for the lock these two are staples for the uh pollutant virus lock where you basically lock them out of being able to use face up monster effects on field nightmare phoenix for removal dark for you know conversions into higher links azalea is interesting it's basically like budget sp except it destroys i'm not as sure its purpose in the list i mean you could you could really just play a second SP, but Azalea doesn't require you to already have like a link or whatever. So I guess maybe that's why she's preferable to a second SP. IP SP and then Reptilian Echidna, which is also necessary for the combo. And she can search you more bodies to play your turn with. Side deck, we got four Bistials, most likely for either Puppet Lock or like Voiceless. It's also decent into Snake Eye. So it's Bistials are just back. The one change your heart, this is interesting, like the mind controls and the change of hearts on top of like the thrust, but uh, maybe to resolve like the summoning conditions of like some of these uh, Octoatics in Graveyard, you can tribute any two monsters to summon them back from Graveyard. So like if you start stealing your opponent's monsters with like change of heart or like mind control, you can like sort of do like two birds, one stone. You can get rid of a, a potential interruption and you could summon back your own monsters from graveyard dark ruler is kind of like a one size fits all kind of thing like maybe if droplet isn't enough because you're playing 50 cards you may need something like dark ruler in your list and it works really well with dressed i bet cyclones i'm surprised i'm not seeing like evenly over maybe like something like mind control or like change of heart because stun is a thing and only three removal cards and like in like 50 cards might be a little eh even with the prosperity I don't know. And then you have like Daruma Cannon, which seems very saucy, but I don't know. I don't know how strong this really is in in the format. Like uh, there, there's no like deck profile, so I don't know how 
how well this Daruma Cannon performed. This is an interesting list to say the least, and uh, it's a really good step towards the future of Ogdoetic, which I want to show right now. So this is a screen cap from an MCO40 video. He covered a Ogdoetic Rika deck that topped in OCG, and initially I didn't think Rika was going to do much in OCG and I didn't have much expectations for it with Ogdoatic as a deck and I can say confidently that there isn't really much to it they're only playing the Rika Link 5 just looking at the list right just comparing like apples to oranges it's this was like a few weeks back this was like one or two weeks back or maybe like last weekend I'm, I'm not too sure on the exact timeline but uh we're basically seeing the same ratios on the Ogdoatics except they're not pay playing the king or queen uh, they're also not playing the Serpent Strike, so maybe to keep the deck at like 42, you can cut some of those down. Uh, maybe it still works with just the basic combo of Leos, right? So Leos, the level 1, Misk. This one's playing Night Sword, and I like Night Sword with Daybreak. Night Sword with Daybreak just seems really free. Also Mamba, Ash, Maxi, because this is OCG. Arcosaur, the one Fossil Dig. I don't know if Fossil Dig's limited there. Snake Reigns. Daybreak, uh, so double Daybreak, double Water Lily, just just like us. A cross out, Thrust Talents, Triple Imperm, Pollutant, Evo Singularity. It feels like they have more space for hand traps and like the same idea. You're still Pollutant locking. You still have a really good utility off of your Ogdo Abyss and your Nephil Abyss. You get good extension off of things like Daybreak and uh, Leos. I mean, Fossil Dig being at one here is kind of eh. Like, you definitely want to bump this up to more if you could. Evil Diversity is the card that I was actually talking about. And this can add an Evil Zara monster from your deck to your hand. So if you really want to Fossil Dig, or if Fossil Dig's um, limited, you can just play Evil Diversities to search the Leos, and you get, it's it's the same difference, right? Or you can search the level one. I mean, the level one searches Leos, Leos searches Misk. So this one, you can do either or. It's really a personal preference. If you start the combo with Leos and you go into milling the miscellaneous source, you have to mill the level one fire reptile later on because you're not going to be milling it off of Leos. So I guess that's another thing. This covers that fossil dig being at one, but I understand their deck was at 42. Um, they need a space for hand traps called by cross out like they need space for like call by cross out like anti hand trap stuff and and they're still fitting nine hand traps in their main even at being at like 10 less cards or eight less cards basically it seems like a really good list it's definitely more reptile focused and princess still being here is like kind of interesting because she's only going into either the rika link five or into dual little chimera i actually forgot the, the rika link five was a fire it's a link four okay so this is actually perfect for Prince. So I guess Princess is going to be a staple in the deck, a post Legacy of Destruction as well. Maybe so, like, instead of going into Apo to protect your lock combo, you have Princess to go into Kusari Gami so that A, she can stop your opponent from activating hand traps for the rest of the turn, which is cool. Like, maybe if they. I don't know ash blossom you at the wrong time or veil you at the wrong time I, I don't think this is gonna come up but like it could come up potentially because like making a card like this you're definitely already gonna be under nib so it's hard to say when or whether this first effect will come up or not but uh this card is in your grave area you target an insect plant or reptile you control place on bottom deck you especially on this card also you cannot summons for its turn except plant and insect or reptile this could be a good uh target to make Zealantis with, right? So you go into Zeal, and then you shuffle back another Reptile to bring this back from Grave. That could be interesting. Unfortunately, it uses Reptiles you control and not other Reptiles in Graveyard. That would have been cooler. But uh, yeah, like you can lock them out of monster effects to potentially stop them from like hold, like to punish them for like holding any hand traps that they may have. And then you can uh, use this to extend into game or into more damage. Which, it's not like a perfect card, I think, for like, as a reptile boss monster, like, we would have preferred something stronger. This is why I wasn't too quick to make like a Ogdoatic Rika video, because I don't think this card does enough for reptiles to like, for us to like, lock ourselves into the 
um, tri type of Rika, but it, it never hit me that you could just princess uh, summon one back and then go into this. So now that's more convenient than trying to use the Rika engine to make this work. So that's good stuff on the OCG's part. And just looking at their side deck, um, it's mostly just hate, right? So they got the droplets inside. <laughs> they have a pointers and they have a reboot. They have DDG, which could be interesting for going going first into boards, especially like when you're playing thrust, like two, three thrust. I think DDG is like great against like Snake Eye and like uh, a lot of decks this format. Uh, Cos yeah, a lot of back row hate, so stun hate. Uh, Book of Eclipses, which is interesting. It's basically Daruma Cannon, right? Like Book of Eclipse, except this could be used going first or second. Um, and then you have the talents, the second talents in, and then you have the second talents in uh, side deck. So that's interesting. I'm interested to see how much more Ogdoatic and Rika can do, or just Ogdoatic can do in general. Um, this is like the second regional it's topped in the past few months, I believe. 32 here, a little top 32 there. And then you got my video. I believe that's it. I'll I'll definitely make like an updated Ogdoatic uh, combo video when I when I have more time, maybe closer to Legacy of or yeah, closer to Legacy of Destruction, uh, covering all the Rika stuff. But really happy to see Ogdoatic taking it all the way to the top eight of an event especially in a so-called tier zero format we're kind of starting to come back from uh the just absolute domination of fire king snake eye it's like people are understanding the deck a little better so i think like the pie charts are going to be a little more dispersed now like even the event i went to this past weekend voiceless voice took that event so uh took like first and second and there was only like one or two fire kings in the top eight or Fire King Snake Eye in the top eight. So, yeah, I mean, this is this is our time, and especially with a ban list coming up and Legacy Destruction coming out, I think the format's going to be more diverse than, than ever, or not more diverse than ever, but but it's going to be a lot more diverse post Legacy of Destruction. I think the game's going to be a lot healthier. Oh, we just we just need to wait for this list and wait for this new set to come out. So, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. This has been your boy Nistro here, signing out.